Hey guys, this is Shannon with Nearly Organic Noshing, and today we're going to talk about mashed potatoes. Now, mashed potatoes are something you can do in small amounts, like tonight I'm only cooking for three people and I don't want a bunch of leftovers, so I'm only going to use four potatoes. We'll have a little bit of leftovers, but not too much. Or you can count, you can cook in like 20 pound bags of potatoes or more for huge crowds of people. But for tonight, I'm just gonna keep it small and keep it simple. So all I have here are potatoes, milk, and this is just the kind of milk I have. You can use any kind of milk you want, butter, salt and pepper. This is just basic mashed potatoes. Now, you can get super creative with your potatoes. You can throw in sour cream, you can throw in cheese, you can throw in bacon, other seasonings you can put in. If you don't wanna put in milk, Put in some ranch. Do you like ranch potatoes? You can do that. You can mix some ranch seasoning packet with the milk and put it in there and you'll have ranch potatoes. Do the same thing with an onion soup mix. You can throw it in there and blend it up and you'll have kind of an oniony. You can put garlic powder, onion powder. You have um, french fry seasoning, throw that in there. That has a lot of those same ingredients in it. Um, garlic, onions, paprika, toss it all in there. Get creative with your seasoning and figure out what you really like. But for today, we're gonna keep it simple, milk, butter, salt. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and peel the potatoes first. I suggest using a peeler, it's just easier, but if you want, you can just use a knife. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and use my peeler and get the potatoes peeled. Okay, I have my potatoes peeled and I have just rinsed them off to make sure I got any bits of dirt or little bits of peel off of them. I have water on my stove that is on to boil and it is salted water so it is coming up to a boil right now. It's ready for the potatoes to go in. And so what I'm gonna do is, you could put the potatoes in just like this but it takes them longer to cook that way. The smaller the pieces, the quicker they cook. So I am going to cut these into probably quarters, quarters to eighths. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these cut up and show you what they look like. So each half I cut into four pieces and these can go into the pot. This one's a little bigger, so I'm going to cut this one one more time so the pieces are more similar in size. Alright, now I have all my chunks. They can go into the pot. Okay, I have them all in the pot and I am going to let them boil until they are fork tender. Now fork tender means that when I take a knife or a fork and I stab it into it, there's very little give, like it slides right in really easy, but you don't wanna cook them so long that they're literally just falling apart in the pot. You want them to be soft, but not crumbly and mush, or you're gonna have a really bland, pasty potato. So just until they're soft enough that you can easily put a fork in or a knife without much give. And like I said, the smaller the pieces you cut, the quicker they will cook. Now, while the potatoes are cooking, we'll talk about mashing when they come out. Um, there are lots of different kinds of potato mashers. If you don't have a potato masher, don't worry. You can just use a fork. But these are a couple ways of mashing them up. You have this one, which will make much smaller pieces. And this one, this is a plastic one. It won't hurt your pot if you wanna do it right in the pot with a plastic one like this. This one is a submersion blender. You can also use hand beaters if you want a really, really smooth, creamy potato. Today, I am just going to be using this one because I'm gonna do the potatoes right in the pot and we like a thicker 
um, kind of a chunkier potato. We don't like it super, super smooth. So this is the one that I will be using. Okay guys, the potatoes are off and you can see that when you go to put a fork in, it just kind of breaks them in half. So they are almost overly cooked. I let them get away from me a little bit. You do not want them any more cooked than this. So I am going to uh, pour off the water and then go ahead and add my seasonings. Okay. Before I even start mashing, I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings so that you're mashing and mixing at the same time. And I've cut about a tablespoon and a half or so of butter. I'm gonna to toss that in. And then I'm just gonna give a little splash of milk. And then go ahead and give a nice dose of salt. And pepper. Now if you want to get creative with your seasonings by all means go for it because you can just add anything. You have some seasoning up there for garlic bread throw it in. You have parsley throw it in. Do what you want and see what you like. Okay now I have all my seasonings in and I'm just gonna start mashing until I get them to the consistency that I like. And since I'm doing this right in the pot, I am using the one that's plastic, so it will not scrape up my pot. If I wanted to use a metal one or a blender, I just would have poured this into a glass bowl or a metal bowl that I could use it in. Okay guys, so I have them as blended as I'm gonna get them. Um, we like ours to have texture, so they are not silky, silky smooth. You're still gonna find little chunks and little pieces in them, but that's just how we like them. You do it how you like, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rest of dinner dished up to go with this. And I hope you guys give it a try, get creative, and tell me what you think. All right guys, have a great night.